Hello everybody, we are back at my ICS home lab and today we're going to be running some Nmap scans and we're going to be doing some exploits of the PLC and we're going to be looking at and anal analyzing all of that information in Wireshark today. So I hope it's informative for you and it's inspiring for you. Um, again, I just want to let you know that the link to lab one that gives you more of an overview of this lab and how I set it up and the things that you need to do to set it up, that's in the first video. So you can get the link to that below. So let's get started and let's get into trying to attack this machine today. Okay, so let's go back to the ICS uh, lab and we're going to try to run some Nmap scans and we're going to use Metasploit to try to do uh, exploitation on this PLC. So I'm just starting Metasploit right now with the MSF console and we'll give that a second to boot up. And now that we're there, I'm gonna search for specific Modbus exploits and just to see if any of them will work. I don't think any of them particularly will, but we just wanna try it out today. I see that there's one that's kind of interesting down here. There's a start stop command. They say it's only for Schneider Modicon, but we're just gonna see if it could do anything disruptive to the PLC. So I'm gonna to choose to um, use number six. Uh, the exploit and now that it's in there I'm going to do show options to see what we need to configure and we can see that it's already set for stop and it's um, already for targeting the specific Modbus port 502 but we need to set of course the RH host so I'm going to set the IP to the PLC's IP address and once I have that kind of ready I'm going to uh, get the PLC up and running so right now um, it's over there and it's stopped and again these just match and so I'm gonna actually put in exploit I'm not gonna hit enter though I'm just kind of getting it ready because um, this can be a little finicky and so I want to be able to do this quickly so I'm gonna start the PLC um, it's now listening on the port it's ready for factory IO to start and now we're gonna get this started. I'm gonna go back over to open PLC so we can see the um, log that happens as we run this exploit. So the PLC is listening and now I'm gonna hit exploit. And you can see that it is getting that communication to the PLC for the exploit. You can kind of hear in the background that it is not, um, it hasn't stopped it yet. So I'm just gonna keep running this a few more times and see if it could disrupt it. And again, every time that I hit exploit, you could see that the PLC is logging it. So they are communicating together, but it's still running. Let's go one more time. I think sometimes my theory is that maybe if you get the timing of it with whatever cycle it's in, um, for the um, for the process that maybe that will do it. I don't really know, so I'm gonna have to do more testing on that. Let's try it one more time. Okay, let's go take a look back. I'm gonna see, I've done this a couple times. Usually it does it after three, of course, because I'm doing the video with you guys and it'll probably take one more time. And let's go back. Okay, so something got thrown off of communication, um, so this isn't working. So now I just want to have it running again because we're going to perform some Nmap scans and see what happens. Just going to do a stealth scan to try to manipulate the three-way handshake of the TCP protocol to see if we can see um, which ports are open. Um, the Modbus one doesn't come up um, on a basic scan, so we actually have to um, do another scan with it specifically for it. So we'll do that right now. And there you go. All right, so let's do some analysis of these packets that I captured when I was running the ICS lab. I'm just gonna open up Wireshark here. And inside I'm gonna open up, let me resize this a little bit 
so that everything's a little bit more front and center for us and hopefully it's easier for you guys to see. So I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go to open and I'm going to go to where I store them which is in my PCAPS folder and we're going to try this one. This was the one where I ran the attack three times and I did um, a couple, I did an Nmap scan. So that should give me a bunch of packets to review. So let's see how big this PCAP was. Um, have close to 10,000 packets to analyze. So this gives kind of a good scenario. Um, you're watching your network and you want to see if there's been any um, um, malicious kind of activities going on on it, but you have a ton of uh, traffic and most of the traffic is between uh, this one, the 0.4 device, which is the PLC and the point um, 111 device, which is the factory IO device. And you want to kind of figure out how to as quickly as possible um, notice somebody on your network who shouldn't be on your network. So the quickest way to do that is to go up to statistics and go to endpoints. And this is where you can look at all the different asset IPs under the IPv4 tab. And you can see if there's anybody on here that you notice that shouldn't be there. And so right here, we have this .18 one, that's the attacker's IP address. So if you just right click on that and you go to apply as filter, you can select it. Now we can close this. And up here, it's actually put in the filter query code um, of IP dot address equals equals that IP address. And so now every action activity with that IP is filtered right here. So we can see right off the bat, we can see this um, SIN and SIN acknowledge. We can see the TCP, um, the Nmap scan that we did, the stealth scan that we did on port 502. And if we scroll um, down here a little bit more, we can see this was the specific Schneider exploit that I ran against it. And it says an exception was returned, an illegal function. So, I mean, the exploit that I used against it, I'm still trying to research specific exploits against um, OpenPLC. And I found a couple of others, but I just wanted to see what would happen if I ran any kind of a Modbus um, exploit against it and see the results. So what I believe happened is just having so many exceptions thrown at the PLC just finally kind of disrupts the um, dialogue and makes it crash. And so that's what happened. So the exploit wasn't that elegant, but we can still analyze it here. So I have all of the traffic um, from the attacker machine to the PLC here. And so what we want to do is I want to analyze this a little bit better. So I want to kind of configure Wireshark to give me a little bit more information all at once. So one thing that I can do is I can just click on any one of these packets. I can um, open up this little tab here to go under the, the TCP. And anything that I want to see up here as a column, I can hover over that data down here, the information down here, and I can right click and I can go apply as column. And so, and then once it's up there, you can drag it over to here. So I want to look at the source port and then you could also, um, that's if you double click on it, it's going to sort these by that. So I don't want to do that. I want to go back and double click on time. So it's all sorted by time but you can right click and you can edit the column and you can even you know name this whatever you want. So I kind of made it a little bit smaller there so that these can kind of be closer together if we want that to, to happen. So you can get more information here on one panel. And likewise, I wanna look at the destination port. So I'm gonna right click on that and I'm going to apply as a column and I'm gonna drop it over here after the destination IP so that those are kind of close together and see how destination port that's really long. So I'm just gonna edit the column because I don't want my column to be that wide. Wide. I'm just gonna code dest port so it's a little bit, a little bit smaller and we can still get a lot more information in here. Okay, so once we have that, we want to look at what what did this attacker do? You know, so right off the bat, we saw the Nmap scan. So they're performing, performing some reconnaissance and remuneration of enumeration of the network. But also when we see this specific attack, we want to know what they did in this attack. Were they able, were they trying to write anything to those PLCs or were they just in pure reconnaissance read only kind of mode? So what we can do is up here, I can actually 
um, within the filter for the uh, tack machine. I can go and and because I also want to apply another filter on top of that to look for the specific Modbus function codes. So I can go Modbus dot and then start putting in function and it comes in as function code equals equals. Remember, you always want it to be up. Oh, sorry, not equals equals. This one we're going to do greater than four because the lower ones are just like read only mode and it doesn't do any attempts to write data. And so this one we can put in anything greater than four because most of the different um, function codes that will be performing some kind of an action by the attacker will have a function code greater than four. Um, specifically write I think is like eight or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. So hit enter and it's gonna filter these through and so we see that in all these ones down here, it has a function code of 90. And so we can go click on the information a little bit more Modbus under Modbus right here. And we can see that, um, yeah, so it is trying to send data through. Um, it's trying to switch it to two, which I think is a uh, stop. It's trying to stop the PLC with that code, with that data injection. Um, but we see that an attacker is on our network and they are doing nefarious activity. So that's what you would kind of do with a PCAP and trying to analyze it. So I hope that's informative. This is still just very beginner. Um, and I'm going to be checking out a couple more of those exploits and hopefully I will be uh, testing them out for you on my next video. Until next time, you guys, happy hacking. Thanks for watching.